is excited to be here tonight. Guys, I don't know if you heard, but Brave Wars starts next week. That is my favorite thing. Um, I think I like Brave Wars even more than Cam, because I feel like we go worse and somebody always gets hurt. I still have a messed up finger when Faye pulled a tug of war and it's still sideways, okay? And that's like from four or five years ago, okay? Um, there's also a couple more spots that opened up for camp. Make sure you sign up. And something so cool that we're doing this summer is summer internship, okay? Um, make sure you sign up. It starts today, sign ups. You do not want to miss out. The cool thing about summer internship is that you get to be in our staff meetings. You get to be in our hangouts. You get to be in everything that we do church-wide. And it's pretty cool because you get to see the back end. You actually get to work with our drum player tonight you get to do different tracks with Sebi which he does everything of creative with Josh you get to even do tracks some kind of tracks we're gonna have tracks with worship production all these things so in every element it's completely different so make sure you sign up you do not want to miss out and honestly you're gonna be bored as heck at home so make sure you sign up and you are here um, I'm asking you guys a question who has trust issues raise your hand hand up okay you guys are the three holy ones because you guys are the only ones that didn't raise your hands everybody else has heck trust issues um i have a lot of them okay i have trust issues we had um we went to go see chainsaw massacre okay and uh, um, i don't do good with scary movies okay it's a scary movie all it is is a movie they get dropped off in the middle of nowhere um, a killer comes out, everybody dies. Um, I know every movie ends like that, but I still like to see them. I still like to get scared. But imagine this, I'm in high school, okay? Um, we were watching the movies at two in the morning. So I'm heading home at two in the morning. Ask me why my mom let me go at that late. I have no idea, but she trusted me. So I was a good kid. So we were heading home at two in the morning and all of a sudden, we're driving through Medley. It's like, you're going through Medley. I used to live in Hialeah, so you're going to Hialeah. And that area, all it is, is warehouses. So imagine an area that is just warehouses at 2 in the morning. It's somewhere that you don't want to be. Exactly. Um, the car starts going, cluck, 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 and it just shuts off. I was like... I just saw Chainsaw Massacre. I start hyperventilating, I start breathing. But of course, my friends are like, yeah, we could fix the car. They start going to open the door. I just grab their, I'm in the back seat, so I grab their seatbelt and I just yank them and I hold them onto the car. I was like, nobody's getting off. We're all staying in this car till morning that we all make it out alive. So just everybody go to sleep. Everybody starts trying to get out of the car and I'm, I go into mom mode, okay? I was like, I don't got no kids, but I'm trying to stay alive. So I'm everybody's mama right now and nobody's getting out of this car. Okay, so once I start screaming and I start hitting all of them because they're not listening to me, they start cracking up. And the reason is because the guy driving knew how to stall a car. Nothing was wrong with the car. They just knew that I was terrified and they thought it would be hilarious to freak me out at two in the morning, okay? Um, so I have the mental trust issues, okay? Like I'm here thinking that this guy's gonna come out, he's gonna kill all of us, um, and I'm gonna freak out. So we're gonna be talking about trust issues tonight. So before we go into it, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for tonight, God. We thank you for the privilege to be able to be here, God. I ask you in this moment, Father God, for you to speak, God. Take away me from this moment, Father God, and let it just be you, God. Let it be your words, Father God. Let it be your understanding, God. Build our trust, build our faith tonight, Father God. Show us areas that we need to build on and areas that we need to let go of, God. So I ask you for open hearts, God. I ask you to speak to us, and that does include me, God. Build us, correct us, God. Um, and just show us what you have for us tonight, God. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen, amen. I say that whole story is because things like that happen and you start creating trust issues, right? You start creating this way of being that 
you're not going to trust the person next to you. So a lot of us have that. A lot of us have that thing of like, you know what? God is not enough or when everything is going down the drain. We question our faith a lot. Who has questioned your faith? I know I've questioned it. That I'm like, okay, I'm doing things right. I'm doing things the way they're supposed to move. Um, I don't see things changing kind of thing. A lot of our faith is like that. A lot of our faith is, God, if I could see it, if I could hold on to it, if I could move it, God, I'm going to trust you. But if I can't see it, I can't hold on to it, I don't see my surroundings, then you tend to try to help God in your situations. I know I'm guilty of that. I know that every situation when I was growing up, I was like, God, I could help you. I could get you a little bit into it. Um, it would just frustrate me that I thought that things were going to go this way, and they wouldn't. They would go the other way. The question we need to ask ourselves are this. Will you believe even when you can't see? Really think about that question. When you can't see something, are you going to believe it? And it's not to bring COVID into this, but perfect example, COVID. I thought it was a big hoax. Um, I thought it was just fake. They were just saying this overseas. I'm um, like, it's not true. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, then a couple months comes and the whole world shut down. But it was why? Because I couldn't see it. You know what? I really believed it. It might sound crazy to you, but I am so skeptical. I do have trust issues. I do not believe anything unless it's right in front of me. I didn't believe it, and it sounds morbid, So I saw it actually happening in New York. Because in Miami, I didn't see it a lot. And I was like, well, this is a lie. But when I had friends in New York that worked in hospitals, and they're like, no, we're filling containers of people, of how many people are, go are passing. That's when I was like, oh, this is a real thing. This is really happening. And COVID shut the world. And I didn't really believe it. I thought, oh, yeah, mainstream media, like, it's not real. It's not this. I'm a big conspiracy theory. So I'm always watching those videos. So I didn't believe anything until I actually knew somebody and we talked about it. And then I'm like, wow, it's not fake. Wow, it's not real. I mean, it is real. It's not something that I'm making up in my head. Um, and that's how it is with us. That's how it is with us with faith. Faith is hard. It's one of those things that you just have to have faith because you come on a Wednesday night or your parents tell you, hey, you need to have faith. Hey, you need to believe this. Hey, these are the steps. But it's so easy to say it, but it's so hard. It's difficult. When you can't see it, when it's not feasible, when you can't touch it, when you can't hold on to it, it's hard. It's hard to say that this person's your friend and then it's, it's like saying, oh, this person's your friend and then they're behind you, they're talking trash. Like the one thing you shared with this person, this whole side of the room knows. And it's like, but I just shared it with this person. But now everybody else knows. That builds trust issues. How are you going to have faith if the one person that's standing next to you, you can't trust? The one person that you could feel, you could hug, could be around you, you can't even trust that person. Or maybe you're in a room and it's so dark or you're in your headspace and it's so dark and everything's going down the drain and you're like, where is that ounce of light? But you can't find it. In those moments, are you trusting God? Are in those moments that you don't see anything coming out, are you trusting God? I know I don't. I know it took me a very long time to really trust God, even though everything around me was going down the drain. Hebrews 11 once says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. I used to hate this verse. I sometimes, faith shows the reality of what we hope for, but it's the evidence of the things we could not see. I'm the kind of person that I love to see everything. I like to be there. But you're asking me to have faith for something I could not see. Because that is genuinely what faith is. Trusting and having faith in things that could not be seen. 
Does that frustrate anybody else or it's just me? You want me to have complete faith in a friendship. I don't even know this person. Like I have been taught since I was strong, since I was small. If I don't know you, I don't talk to you. Stranger danger. Somebody comes up to you, I don't talk to. I scream stranger danger, and I run the opposite way. I've been learning this since I was a kid, and now I come into have this relationship with God. But you want me to trust someone that I've never seen. I cannot feel. You want me to have faith that this individual, all being almighty, but I've never been able to see him face to face. You want me to have faith. Yes, I agree. Like when I was younger, I was like, yeah, mom, I get it. I know. I was even to the point that I believed he was real. I was like, okay, God, I know, mom. You explained it to me multiple times. It's like the wind. And I spoke about it two weeks ago. I know it's like the wind. I cannot feel him. I know the wind is there because I could feel it. I see the trees moving. I know when I have a moment with God. I know that God is real. I'm not saying that he's a lie, but you want me to have faith that he cares for me the way you do. You provide for me. You give me meals. You give me clothing. You give me shelter. You let me do the crazy things I want to do. I'm like, you want me to have complete faith in someone that I know it's there, but sometimes I don't know if he's even listening to me. I feel like I'm just talking to the wind. It's frustrating when you're talking to someone and you're praying or you're fasting and you're doing the right thing. You're here on a Wednesday night. You're here on a Sunday serving. You go to your dinner parties. But still things are going down the drain. You feel like, hey, I try, but I just take another step back. I want God to answer me. I'm doing all the right things because I want to hear God's voice. I want him to tell me if this is what I'm supposed to do, if this is what I'm not supposed to do. But I'm not hearing Jack. I don't hear anything. Hebrews 11.5 says, it was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone, anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists that he rewards those who, who sincerely seek him. You want me. This is a knock. God found him pleasing. That's just an example. Like, I don't know if you know his story, but basically he was hanging out. Jesus came, took him out. He never has to experience death. He never died. He is right now with God Never, not, never died. He's hanging out over there with him. He's living his best life in heaven, okay? Where there is no hurt, there is nothing wrong, nothing in your body hurts. You can't fall, get scratches. You fall, you're fine. You probably fall in a bubble. I don't know, but I'm sure you don't get hurt. Nothing like that. Like, you are fine. That is where Enoch is. And the reason he is, is because he was known as the person who pleased God. And you cannot please God if you don't have faith in God. So many times we're trying to do the right thing, trying to do the works, the works, the works, the works. And we're like, hey, I'm doing all the right things, but why can't I get it together? Why? Because I'm sure that your faith is lacking. If your faith is lacking, it doesn't matter how many good deeds you do. When you have faith, good deeds automatically happen. You don't have to try. When your faith is at the all-time high with God, things just come naturally. And you're thriving and you're striving and nothing worries why because your faith is in God and you don't care. Hey, if this going is down the drain, I don't care because I'm trusting in God. I want my life to be pleasing to God. Never having to experience death, that's pretty cool. Like, if that happens to me, sorry, babe, you know. I want to go see God. I don't want to come to death. And like if I could just be pleasing to God and I could just ride with God to heaven, how cool is that? Yeah. Skydiving was amazing. I could imagine going all the way to heaven alive. You got me? So how amazing it is just because his faith was so secure, he was pleasing to God. Never having to die and just hanging out with God, that to me is amazing. Did you know that we were called to trust in God? Like we were created. Like one of our callings is to trust God. 
We're, we're called to trust him even though we can't see things. Isaiah 55, 8, 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. That to me is hard because I'm not dumb. I think I'm pretty smart. I make good decisions. I was that kid that always go against my mom. My mom's like, I don't know how you ended up being a youth pastor. I thought you were going to be a lawyer. Because every single time, I had a rebuttal. I loved going back and forth. If you said this was blue, I knew it was blue. But if I could just get something out of you and fight with you for a while, it was fun. Like, I loved debating. I loved, loved, loved debating. My law class, I was amazing. Like, I loved it. I was always with my debates. That was my thing. I loved debating. Mandy likes debating, too. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> For my thoughts are not your thoughts. And I was always getting frustrated with God. I was like, God, I'm not dumb. I think my thoughts are pretty solid. Like, you've made me in your image. I'm pretty smart. Um, not to be conceited, but I was like, I get good grades. I'm smart. Like, I'm not doing anything dumb. I'm not making dumb decisions. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, your ways are not my ways. I was like, God, I'm not even doing the wrong thing. Like, I'm a youth student. I'm going to church. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Like, just meet me halfway, bro. Like, come on. Just give me something that I want. But that was God trying to show me that I wasn't meant to do what I wanted. I was meant to have faith and trust God. And he probably would have taken me down the road that I wanted to go. But I wanted to rebuttal so much. I wanted to do things my way that even though what I wanted was right there, God had to put a wall and stop it to really show me it's not what you want. It's what I want. I need you to have faith in me, Asenia, for I can lead you where I want to lead you. And the real thing is, like, are we willing to do that? Are we willing really to trust God and be like, hey, God, you lead me where you want to. Let me have faith that I'm going where you want me to go. It requires a lot of faith. It requires really trusting God. I promise you, if I get a chair up here, let's say David. I get a chair up here, I'll tell David, David, come and sit with, to the chair. He would come, get on the stage, sit down, right? And you view what? But if I had a chair, I blindfolded you. Even if I just went like this to the chair, you would think that I probably moved it across the stage. I told you, walk the same way. If you're blindfolded, do you think it would be as easy to walk to the chair? It would take complete faith for me to tell you, walk three, and you actually walk the three steps. Because this is how we take steps. If I blindfold you, this is going to be your steps. Right? Like, you would be scared. Why? Because it is so hard to have faith when you cannot see things. It's so hard to trust God when you cannot hold on to it. When there is not a direct direction of where God is leading you and God is telling you, hey, you know what, Cammy? I'm going to take you where I'm going to take you, but you need to trust me. It's hard to do that. It's hard to take a step where nothing is seen. I remember a season in my life that it was just starting to have faith. I was at a job, and some things had been said about my work that I was like, in my head, I was like, I didn't do that. And my first response was like, I'm going to go argue. I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to defend myself. And when I was going to walk out of the office to go defend myself, I was like, I just felt like a calmness come over me. And I was like, no. You know what? It is what it is. I really don't care. I'm not going to deal with it. And I walked away. A few weeks passed by. My boss sat with me. And he was like, Yesenia, why didn't you tell me that this wasn't you? Why didn't you tell me that the, the, like, the situation had nothing to do with you? And in that moment, I figured out why God had put a peace over me and told me just not to care. In that moment, I got to talk to my boss, and I told him straightforward, hey, I'm sorry it sounds churchy, but it was just because of God. I know that God has me. There was no point for me to defend myself. I know that God's going to come and defend me, and I just don't have time to entertain it. I have faith that God likes me more than you like me, that God cares for me more than you care for me. 
I know you've always opened up the door that I could walk in here, share my feelings, and you'll hear me out. But I have someone that makes you look small with all respect. I knew that he was going to come to my defense. And after that, it was like between four months, and I was the VP of operations. So basically, he would leave, and I would run all the companies. But that only happened because of God's grace. I really believe that that only happened because he saw my character. He saw my ethic. I can imagine my mom when we were sleeping at a McDonald's. So my mom would sleep with me. Me and my mom were homeless. She would sleep in her car. She would shower me in a McDonald's. I could believe the type of faith this woman had with a three-year-old in a car by herself, not knowing how she was going to figure out stuff to the next day. But this woman having complete faith, like, hey, God, I don't know it, but I'm going to still go to church. God, I don't know how it's going to work, but I'm going to still keep on pushing. And it was because of somebody else's blind faith in God is that she has a legacy. She has a generation that is chasing after God. And sometimes, like, my mom was the first so it's like, what legacy, what faith do you are believing in it? Like, what do you want to see different in your family? Because our families are the way they are. You can't change them. But what do you want to change? What kind of, what radical faith do you need to have to decide, hey, it doesn't matter if I don't see it. I don't care if it's not a reality. God, this is the truth. You know what? I might not believe it, but I might not see it, but I'm still going to choose to believe it. And I'm going to see things not as they are, but as they're going to be. To take to that step, it took a lot of little times. It took a lot of little times, people talking trash about me in school and me just letting it be. It took a lot of times me that I would get into fights. But every time I got in a fight, it didn't help anything. Every single time I let it be, God had it handled. So my thing is, what kind of faith are you having? Are you having the kind of faith that you have to go and Fight for God, fight for yourself, or are you having the kind of faith that you're going to let, hey, God, you handle it. I'm going to trust you because you're in the midst of it. Three things that are going to help you really change your faith from casual faith but to real faith is first, you have to chase God. Matthew 6.33 says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. You need to chase God and look for him. You need to chase him. To have that real faith, you need to get out of your comfort zone. You need to have that real kingdom culture. To have that real God kingdom culture, you need to get out of your comfort. You need to get out of your norm. Hey, I come on Wednesdays and I hear it. I get a little bit. No, you need to go home. You need to get intimate with God. Like you need to chase God. Because you know what? God has been chasing you for a very long time. There is not a coincidence that you're in the room. There's not a coincidence that you come to Brave Youth and you're part of here. No, God has been chasing you. Now he's waiting for you to chase him. I say it all the time. God is a gentleman. God is not going to force himself on you. God is not going to mind control you and tell you, hey, you have to do this, this, and this. No, he will chase you, but he is begging you for you to chase him back. So you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to chase God. Second, with consistency. John 8, 31 says, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Abiding is daily. Abiding is consistent. Abiding is intentional faith. Doing it Every day and being consistent is what changes everything. You want to lose weight? You're not going to lose weight just by going to the gym one time. I wish. Trust me. It doesn't happen. You have to be consistent. You to grow a relationship with God. You have to be consistent. You to be great at whatever you want to be great at. You have to be consistent. You have to chase after God. You can't chase after God one time. There's so many things that we're addicted to. There's so many things that have ties on us. 
and we're like, God, I fasted for a week. Why can I move past it? God, I'm chasing you. I've been coming to youth for two months. Why is nothing changing? But the real thing is it didn't take two weeks for you to get where you are, for you to be addicted to whatever it is. For you to be stuck in the gossip, for you to be stuck with this person, for you to be stuck in pornography, smoking, vaping, whatever. There's so many things that we deal with, gossip, fighting, whatever it might be. Whatever your addiction might look like, it didn't take one day for you to get there. You compromised here, you compromised here, 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 here. Now when you're here, you're like... How did I get there? It's just because of all the little compromises. So as many times as you compromise, that's how many times you have to chase God. And not because God's far from you. But if any kind of relationship takes work. Any type of relationship, that's friendships, that's parents, that's even at school with your teachers. Whatever relationship you have. Your best friendships, you probably talk every day, right? Your, base re- your best relationships, you talk every day. Why? Because you chase after your friend. You're consistent with your friend. And you don't just chase them. You're not consistent. But you also have confidence in your friends. Hebrews 4, 14 through 16 says, Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest... With ready access to God, let's not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch and reality. That's who your God is. You do not have a God that is out of touch, that it's out of reality. He's been through weakness. He's been through testing. He experienced everything we experience now. All but sin. Not because... He wasn't tempted. He just said no. So let's walk right up to him and get what he is ready to give. Take the mercy and accept the help. Many times we think that we're not worthy of God. God went through it all and he is ready to give it to you. It's not that you have to work for it. It's not that you have to do something extra. It's nothing extra that you need to do. God is ready to give it to us. When I read this, and I was sharing it with the leaders, when I read that, um, I was like, God, I don't ever want to lose that all. I don't ever want to stop chasing you. I don't want to stop being consistent with you. I don't want to lose my confidence in you. I want to know that when everything might be tumbling or when everything is going great, it's going to last. Because sometimes, let's be honest, everything is going so great that we're waiting for the bad to happen. Where I'm like, you know what, let me just enjoy the season because it's not going to last long. That sucks. But you know what? I'm deciding today that I want to have confidence in God. That he is ready to give it to me. That you know what? If he's given me a good season, it's because he wants me to walk in that good season. If it's chasing me, you know what, God? I'm going to chase you back. I'm going to be consistent with you because you're my best relationship. I'm going to be consistent because I know, God, that if I'm consistent with you, you're going to be consistent with everything else. God, if I'm confident with you, I know that you're ready to give me something. I just have to walk in through that door. Guys, you are a daughter or a son of a king because that's who God is he is the Lord of Lords he's the king of kings so you are genuinely a daughter and a son of a king so walk boldly up to him whoever your caretaker is are you scared to walk up to them and tell them hey can I have a glass of water You're not scared to walk up to your mom. Mom, can I have a glass of water? Even with Zaz, you're not scared to walk up to them and ask him for a cup of water. 
You know they're going to give it to you. Why are we scared to walk up to God with that kind of confidence? When we think like, hey, what we're asking for is so far-fetched. Why do we not walk up to confidence with God and be like, hey, God, I want this, this, and this. I honestly believe that we're scared to do that because we haven't been chasing God and we haven't been consistent with God. Because when you chase God and you're consistent with God, you're going to have confidence in God. Why? Because you're close to him. You have a relationship with him. You talk to him daily. So you know the God that is talking to you. So there is nothing of wondering, oh, does he really care? Is he really in the midst of it? And Stephanie's going to come up right now in a second. And she's going to challenge you guys in something. And before she does, or while she's coming up, I want you to close your eyes for a second, everybody. David, you too, stop looking at me. Close your eyes. <laughs> I want you to really close your eyes and think, hey, God, have I been consistent? Have I been chasing you? Do I have that type of confidence in you? 